Hello everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to another episode of Magic News. And it has been a while since I've done an episode of Magic News. And trust me, a lot of things have happened in the Magic community. I could not talk about them all if I wanted to. So in this video, I'm going to focus on just two of the biggest stories in Magic over the last month. One of them is quite serious and the other is more lighthearted. We will get to that one in a second. But first, I need to talk about something yeah, very serious. And, and, and this isn't something that I really wanted to talk about. I really umdenard over whether to talk about this in a video, but I'm going to. And I think I have to, because this story is too big to ignore. It, it, it's more than just magic news, it's news news. It's global news. And I need to address it. I understand there are some magicians out there who want to ignore this and pretend this isn't a thing and they will not touch this story with a barge pole. Believe me, they want to be a hundred miles away from this story. And I totally get that. I totally understand every magician has a different preference on what they want to talk about on their social channels. But for me, I just felt like I had to talk about this. And I'm talking, of course, about the David Copperfield situation. If you're unfamiliar, well, I'll sort of take you right from the start of this story. In, I think it was October, David Copperfield announced the moon vanish. He was going to vanish the moon. It was going to be one of these big stunts a la vanishing the Statue of Liberty. And it was really hyped about. For a while, it was the talked about thing in the magic community. And everyone was really, really looking forward to it. It was going to air on TV in February of 2024. But just before that, in January 2024, the Jeffrey Epstein documents were released. More than 900 pages of court documents were made public, and in those documents, David Copperfield's connection to Jeffrey Epstein was revealed. It was spoken about how he used to perform magic tricks at Epstein's dinner parties for the guests, and then some other stuff, some more troubling stuff. It is alleged in those court documents that Copperfield asked one of the girls about the recruitment process that was happening on that private island. And there are lots of celebrities mentioned in the court documents. I mean, all sorts of people, Stephen Hawking, loads of people. But this is one of the rare instances where a celebrity is seen to have known about what was going on on the island and not said anything. I mean, David Copperfield never came out and said anything about Jeffrey Epstein, but did he know what was going on? There was a lot of mystery surrounding that, and obviously it threw a lot of things into question. Cut to present day, and The Guardian release this story. 16 women have now come forward and accused David Copperfield of sexual misconduct and assault. It, it's sort of staggering, actually. The, the allegations cover more than four decades, and some of the alleged victims at the time of the incidents were under 18. It's, it's too big to ignore at this point, and this is by no means Copperfield's only run-in with allegations of wrongdoing. In 2007, a woman called Lacey Carroll accused him of sexual assault that happened allegedly on his private island. In 2018, a model called Brittany Lewis accused him again of similar things. It's, it's mounting up to the point where, like I say, you just can't ignore it anymore. And, and just to focus on the magic side a, a little bit, this moon vanish is clearly not going to happen, right? Anyone that thinks it is going to happen, I, I seriously, seriously would be surprised if it does. I think this is pretty much the end of David Copperfield. I think we're going to see him very much step away from the stage, very much step away from the public light. I think his, his career is essentially over now. I'm not going to go into too much more detail about this story. Like I say, this isn't the normal thing that I talk about on this channel but it needs addressing. I've left down in the description a link to the full Guardian article where you can read in depth. It is highly worth a read from top to bottom. There's really nothing more I can say in this video that the, the article doesn't say. The article says everything you need to know. So if you want to learn more about this story, link is down in the description. All right, we're gonna have a little tonal shift now. I understand that that's kind of a hard thing to move on from. But we need to talk about something positive um, to cheer us up. And this is a super positive story. This is something that I, <laughs> I just sort of was in awe of when this happened. And this is by no means a recent story, but I've, I've kept meaning to make a video about this. And I need to. I need to talk about it. I need to talk about Dan and Dave making their entire library of effects and magic and techniques and cardistry, making everything public domain. What exactly does that mean, though? They posted this very minimalist, mysterious image on Instagram, and the caption reads as so. 
Today, April 29th, 2024 it was, we dedicate our entire body of original techniques in sleight of hand, magic and cardistry to the public domain under Creative Commons Zero license. By doing so, we make all our moves, slights and routines freely available for experimentation, adaptation and instruction. Teach our stuff, remix it, build upon it and share it however you see fit. They then clarify with an edit on May the 9th. This is not permission to pirate marketed videos. This is a blanket permission to make new and better versions of what we have created in the past. We hope that opening our intellectual property to the world will ignite creativity and innovation in others, pushing the boundaries of what is possible in our art. What, what a fantastic, what an utterly fantastic thing to do. And Look, this is going to sound like I'm lying. I am I am not lying here whatsoever. I considered a while ago, back in like lockdown it was, like 2020, 2021, I considered doing an experiment on YouTube where I allowed this to happen for my stuff for a month. I was going to make a video on YouTube being like, from, from this day until 30 days in the future, during this window and this window alone, all of my stuff is public domain. You can teach it, you can share it, you can reveal it, you can do whatever. And I never did it. I was too scared to do it. And honestly, looking back, I kind of wish I'd done it and maybe I will still do it in the future as an experiment to see what happens. This is a phenomenal thing for the magic community, first of all, and I'm gonna go into depth on exactly why I think it is so good. Although I've seen so much positivity outpouring from this, which is great to see. Dan and Dave are legends of the game. They are some of the first people I ever learnt magic from. I had a, a magician who lent me Dan and Dave DVDs and I remember like popping them in my portable DVD player when I must have been like, oh, I don't know, like 14 or something. I had a portable DVD player in the back of the car with a deck of cards on a family holiday. And I remember learning Dan and Dave tricks from that. It's such a, like, a memory that is so close to my heart. Now to sort of have them share their art form in this way is so, so special. Normally the way it works, when a magician dies, their stuff becomes public domain. This is one of the first and only examples of a time that living magicians have released their stuff to the public domain. It is really not the done thing, it's just not. And I can totally see why, right? Because magicians want to profit off the work that they have made. They want to be able to sell it and keep the rights to it and use it in the ways that they want and, and keep some control over it, I think, a lot of the time. This is sort of a, a game changer. And I can really see a lot of magicians following in their footsteps and wanting to do something similar. Like I say, I've kind of thought about it and I'm I'm considering it, but, but I'll have to see because it's such a a bold move. And you can't undo it either. Once you've done it, you, you can't undo it. And that's kind of why I held back on doing even a small window of experimenting with this, because you really, you really can't go back on it. You can't press the control Z button on that. Now here's the thing. Is there intent to give out the stuff for free? Are they going to release all of their PDFs? Are they going to release all their tutorials for free, where you can just get them for free and then make your own tutorials and all that sort of stuff? And I think the answer is, is a definite no. I don't think you're gonna be able to go out there and, and buy Dan and Dave stuff for free. They are still going to be releasing magic and charging for their magic, and of course, earning an income from the stuff that they buy. But what it now means is that theoretically, you could go out there, buy a Dan and Dave book or DVD, learn all the stuff in it, and then teach that very stuff for yourself in your own magic products. They say you can use it for commercial uses. And of course, the next obvious question that people are gonna ask me is, Kevin, are you going to now be teaching a load of Dan and Dave stuff? And, and the answer is no, certainly not on purpose. I'm not gonna seek it out and try and profit off that. I think it's a very generous move, but I think it's a move that we need to respect. Because if it's abused, if it's, and I've not seen it so far, this was released a while ago, and kind of the reason I didn't make a video immediately at the time is I wanted to see what the initial aftermath was. Whether YouTube was suddenly going to be flooded with loads of tutorials of Dan and Dave stuff, and I've certainly not seen that. I've seen one or two, maybe, that have cropped up. It's like, oh yeah, they, they can teach that, it's Dan and Dave but it's not been an influx by any means. It's not been like people have really been leeching off this. Maybe there are channels out there that I don't know about that have been, and they are well within their right to, don't get me wrong. There's no moral dilemma there. Dan and Dave have literally given you permission to teach their stuff, but it's interesting that people have really respected it. It's not like the vultures have descended and ravaged the entire Dan and Dave back catalog and taught everything. Like that, that hasn't happened. And I think that's a really, really positive move. 
to inspire other magicians to go and do it. And that's great because sometimes we talk about negative things to do with the magic community on this channel and we talk about it in a negative light and even in this video of course we've covered some really negative stuff but to have this super super positive thing i think in my opinion the best thing to come out of the magic community this year was this announcement um so yeah really positive sign I'm looking forward to seeing what people do, and uh, yeah, there we go. That is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next one. Until then, take care.